While most people remember Earthquake for his work against Hulk Hogan at the dawn of the 90s, John Tenta has had many other curious and interesting career highlights that are definitely worth looking into. Tenta was so good at his job that he was awarded PWI's Most Hated Wrestler of the Year in 1990, and while he had the stereotypical body and persona that was built a job to the likes of Hulk Hogan during the early 90s, his ring work and his persona helped him stand out as a memorable character during the WWF's Federation years. In this video, we will look at the life and career of John Tenta, better known as Earthquake. John Anthony Tenta was born on June 22, 1963 in British Columbia. He was big from birth, weighing 11 pounds, and he'd grow up to be affectionately known as Big John by friends and colleagues. In the early 1980s, he migrated south and attended Louisiana State University, where he was a two-sport athlete, participating in football and wrestling. John travelled to Japan in 1985 to compete in sumo wrestling, where he had an incredible 24-match win streak in the sport of sumo, remaining undefeated during his whole eight-month stint in the sport. His rise in sumo earned him the nickname The Canadian Comet. John had a tiger tattoo on his left arm and this drew controversy during his time in Japan. In Japan, tattoos are associated with gangsters and the Yakuza, and public display of tattoos is widely prohibited. For this reason, John was sometimes frowned upon by sumo fans and competitors, leading him to cover the tattoo up during competitions. Additionally, the hard-hitting nature of sumo took a toll on John, resulting in him giving up the sport. John said, out of all the sports he's ever competed in, nothing hurt his body more than sumo. After getting publicly criticised by his sumo stables grandmaster for quitting, John looked at pro wrestling as a way to make a living, remaining in Japan to compete in all Japan pro wrestling. Under the tutelage of Japanese legend Jan Baba, John had a two year run with all Japan, met with great success thanks to his willingness to learn and his unique look. Tenta's success in Japan would capture the eyes of promoters across America, and in 1989, John would sign with Vince McMahon in the WWF. He worked a dark match first as Earthquake Evans to get him ready for a surprising debut that was actually booked pretty well. Tenta made his WWF television debut on the November 11th, 1989 edition of WWF Superstars of Wrestling, where he was planted in the audience. During this night, Dino Bravo challenged the Ultimate Warrior to a strength competition. Dino and his manager Jimmy Hart came up with the idea that they should select someone from the crowd to sit on the backs of Bravo and Warrior while they were performing push-ups. Jimmy Hart would select John Tenta from the audience. Tenta got in the ring and proceeded to sit on Bravo's back as he did a set of push-ups, though during the Ultimate Warriors set, Tenta attacked Warrior with a seated senton, swerving the crowd in the process. This was no fan, this was a villain. Dino Bravo and Tenta then performed multiple big splashes on the Warrior. Both then celebrated as Tenta was revealed as a heel with Jimmy Hart as his manager. Tenta was first named the Canadian Earthquake, but by WrestleMania 6, he was thankfully renamed to simply Earthquake, and he was booked as an unstoppable heel monster during his early days. Unfortunately, maybe Earthquake was pushed too quick. Earthquake's first WWE pay-per-view appearance was at Survivor Series 89, not even two weeks after his debut. He was a survivor for his team on this night. He followed up this pay-per-view appearance with another at WrestleMania 6 where he defeated Hercules. After this, Earthquake's stock rose as he went into a feud with Hulk Hogan. Fans will fondly remember the Brother Love Show segment featuring Hulk Hogan getting his ribs smashed by Earthquake. Not because everyone dislikes Hogan, but because it was one of those rare occasions where we saw Hogan's dominating run looking like it was really in jeopardy. Both men do deserve credit for this particular segment, as Hogan was prepared to look like he had no answer for Earthquake. Of course, Earthquake would be losing their matches as the WWF toured Hogan vs Earthquake for the majority of the late 90s, but the Brother Love segment served its purpose. 
It looked like Earthquake could easily destroy Hogan and fans were prepared to pay a ticket to see Hogan get his revenge. Hogan would go on to get a count out victory at SummerSlam that year against Earthquake and the pair were the final two participants in the 1991 Royal Rumble, which Hogan won. On April 1st, 1991, the WWF held a joint show with Japanese promotion Super World of Sports called SWS Wrestle Dream. Earthquake was booked into a match with Koji Katao and while the match was in no way a 5 star classic, this is a match you need to see if you haven't already. In short, Katao would shoot during the match on Earthquake. Katao was also a sumo wrestler before making his way to the AWA and then eventually New Japan Pro Wrestling in the late 80s, so you can see there's a kind of parallel to the careers of both John Tanta and Koji Katao. For whatever reason, the match between Earthquake and Katao quickly turns into a shoot. The match ended when Katao was disqualified for legitimately kicking the referee. Not included in the tape though is how he immediately grabbed the microphone after the match and began telling the audience that wrestling is fake and Tanta never could really beat him in a fight. Still, the match is one of those oddities in wrestling that you really do have to see for yourself. It is online if you have a look. Earthquake would go on to feud with Jake Roberts in the WWF which led to some memorable segments, in particular when he squashed Damien, Jake's pet snake, which drew controversy when the footage aired on primetime wrestling. To their credit, WWF ran with this and soon Earthquake was cooking Quake burgers on the grill, serving the burgers to WWF TV hosts before revealing that the burgers were made with Damien's carcass. The segment is loads of fun, showing Bobby Heenan doing what he does best and Vince McMahon acting very annoyed. Jake and Earthquake would go on to feud throughout most of spring and into the summer of 91. In late 1991, Earthquake teamed with Typhoon to form the Natural Disasters. They started as a heel team, but when manager Jimmy Hart turned on them, they became babyfaces. As heels, the Natural Disasters mainly feuded with the Bushwhackers in the Legion of Doom, and as babyfaces, they found success while feuding with the Nasty Boys, the Beverly Brothers, and Money Inc. Eventually, the Disasters captured the tag titles, but quickly dropped them to Money Inc. At the 1993 Royal Rumble, Typhoon was already in the ring when Earthquake entered as number 23 and he immediately went after his tag partner, focusing only on him until Typhoon was eliminated. The disaster's feud would never be because Earthquake left the WWF shortly after the Royal Rumble. John went back to Japan to find some work with Wrestle and Romance before briefly coming back to the WWF in 1994. In this second run, he made quick work of Adam Bomb at WrestleMania 10 and also had a sumo match with Yokozuna on Raw, which he won. Eventually though, Earthquake was released from his contract and an injury caused by Yokozuna and Crush were given as the reasons for his hasty disappearance. Earthquake's old rival Hulk Hogan had gone to WCW and when money got tight, the Hulkster put in a good word for Tanta. Soon afterwards, John Tanta was hired by WCW where he was renamed Avalanche, a name that WWE would try to sue WCW over, stating that it sounded too similar to Earthquake. Avalanche was a member of Kevin Sullivan's Three Faces of Fear stable and mostly jobbed to the likes of Hogan, Sting and Randy Savage. Due to the issues surrounding his wrestling character's name, John decided to switch his gimmick and name to The Shark in 1995 when he joined the Dungeon of Doom, going as far as to change his tiger tattoo with a cover up of a shark. John really did believe in the shark gimmick and he believed this was his ticket to superstardom in WCW. Hindsight is 2020, of course, but you kinda gotta feel sorry for John here. He was committed to this gimmick when someone really should have said to him, hey, let's rethink this gimmick and tattoo for a moment, you know? Eventually, by 1996, Tanta broke away from the Dungeon of Doom after the faction turned on him and shaved his head. After this, Tanta cut probably the greatest promo in his career when he denounced all the gimmicks he had been lumbered with and instead said that he was John Tanta, a man with a new purpose in WCW. He would go on to wrestle under his real name and even got close to winning the WCW heavyweight title from the Giant on Nitro, but he ended up losing the match. 
He would leave WCW by 1997, but by the next year he'd resurface back in the WWF, not as Earthquake, not as Avalanche or The Shark, not even as John Tenta. John came back to the WWF on the May 25th, 1998 episode of Raw is War under the name Golga. He wrestled under a gold mask as a member of the Oddity stable. For some weird reason, the character had a fascination with Eric Cartman from South Park. This was never explained on TV, by the way. The reasons given as to why Tanta didn't return as Earthquake was because he had lost so much weight that the Earthquake gimmick simply wouldn't work for him anymore. I'll never understand this. Here you have a guy who had a good run in the WWF years prior and had, at least, a little bit of stock value in his name. Surely there could have been something else he could have done instead of joining the likes of the insane clown posse in a lower card stable. But anyway, it happened. At the 1999 Royal Rumble, Golga entered the Rumble at number 3 but quickly got eliminated by Steve Austin. The oddities disappeared shortly afterwards with every member getting released. The good news is though, Tanta was able to make one more pay-per-view appearance as Earthquake when he competed in the 20-man gimmick battle royal match at WrestleMania 17. While he didn't win, it was great to see the old gimmick make a return. John had apparently planned on opening a wrestling school, but his plans were put on hold after his bladder cancer diagnosis in May of 2004. This form of cancer is definitely nowhere near as common as other forms and mostly only develops in the elderly, making John Tanta a very rare case. John underwent rounds of both radiation and chemotherapy in attempts to treat the bladder cancer. Sadly, during an interview conducted by WrestleCrop Radio on November 18th, 2005, he shared with his fans that the treatments had been so far unsuccessful. The cancer in his bladder had not been reduced by treatments, and tumours had developed in his lungs. On June 7, 2006, John passed away in Sanford, Florida. He was only 42 years old. Before his death, John was a regular on the WrestleCrop forums where he would frequently post to fans and enjoy involving himself in conversations around his life and wrestling in general. Years later, John's son would post pictures of he and his dad on Reddit, showing John as a family man, a side we never got to see of him during his WWF heyday. I tried to reach out to John's son just to see if he wanted to add anything at all to this video and just to let him know that it's getting made and um, didn't hear anything back from him. I'm sure he's busy, but hopefully he sees this and he can see that his dad still has plenty of fans. An unintentional theme of this video series seems to be wrestlers who have not been inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame, but really they should be. John Tanta fits into this category. To date, he has not been honoured by WWE with a spot in the Hall of Fame, but hopefully this changes soon. <laughs>